When you enable a computer, a Windows computer, for PowerShell remoting, the setup for that process creates what's called a listener on that device. And if you're familiar with how web servers work, a listener is an endpoint that allows, it's literally waiting for an incoming connection, in this case, on either HTTP or HTTPS WS MAN ports, and it serves as the connection point or the link between your local machine and the remote box. Any commands that you send over that LAN connection are received through the listener through what's called the remoting session configuration on the remote machine and fed to the PowerShell host and the processing actually takes place on that remote machine. So if you fan out and you target 50 machines with a single script, by default 25 at a time will be active and be processing on their side while your administrative workstation is sitting pretty. Now there is a gotcha as there always is. You want to be careful when you're doing PowerShell remoting that you don't send too big of a fan out because every time you use remoting to make more than one remote connection those are system resources that need to be reserved on your local computer. So if your local computer doesn't have a whole lot of RAM on it and isn't very strong CPU-wise, it's possible to send out a fan-out request that cripples your local machine, so definitely keep that in mind. If you have more than 25 remote machines that are in your target group, it's 25 by default that processes in parallel, but you can actually adjust that throttle threshold. And what that means is the other 25 in my fictional example of 50 targets would just kind of be waiting in the wings such that when one in the 25 in the active queue releases, one of the other ones left over will latch in. So you'll have that 25 slot queue, 